Final match of the afternoon session on day one of the European match play. Disappointments in the last match for Dutchman Michael van der Horst. Maybe there'll be success for the Dutch here with Remco van Eyden, a man who saw off some fairly stiff competition in European qualifying, beating the likes of Jeffrey de Graaf and Jermaine Watemena and Christian Kist. And having done all the hard work, he's got a man who has a little bit of pedigree behind him, Andrew Gilding. A man who we've seen once on the European Tour this year and since then has put in some fairly consistent performances on the Players' Championship circuit in Barnsley. Should be a decent encounter, this one. What? Yes, it should be, Rob. I mean, we have to say, or I have to say with um, Andrew, that you know, two years ago he was a tough player to beat, really doing well. But the last 12 months gone off the boil a little bit. We've seen... Odd little sparks of, uh, of good form from him, but not the consistency when he really come on the on the circuit. And uh, it was a tough competitor to beat. But Remco, you know, been around a few years, got a good throw, got a good attitude to the game as well, you know, good mindset. So, uh, yeah, I think it could be a close game. Well, as you can see from the shirts, if you're a fan of American football, Remco is a, a huge, huge follower of the San Francisco 49ers. The colours are there. And he's got the motif on the back of his shirt that resembles the 49ers as well. What's your team then? In American football? Yep. Um, I don't really follow it. I suppose if pushed for an answer, I'd have to go for maybe one of the, yeah, maybe the Packers, because sort of their pedigree. Like and their, Andrew Redskins. Their, 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 history, their history, yeah. And the Redskins for you? Game yeah, on. the Redskins. Uh, when I first started watching it. I mean, the Packers, it's like, they're like the Real Madrid, I suppose, of, your, of uh, American football. Yeah. They have the, you know, 250,000 strong weight for a season ticket and... They're just, you have to put your name down at birth to get one effectively. They're, they're 140. And it's, you know, based in such a small town effectively in the middle of nowhere. And I to have that, it's I watched the incredible. Dallas Cowboys once when I was out in America. Three hour match. Mm. 140. Is, well, no, but it got, it got boring in the end. Yeah. I'd rather watch it on TV. More of a baseball man myself. They can, that can go on a long time. Two o'clock in the morning, my match finished when I was last there. Anyway, back here in Hamburg. It shouldn't be a three-hour match. This should be done and busted in about 15 minutes or so. Gilding with the advantage of throwing first in the final match of the afternoon session. Wins already today for the Belgian youngster Mike De Decker, for Darren Webster, for Max Hopp, the World Youth Champion. Alan Norris just got over the line against Richie Corner. Magnus Karras, a 6-3 winner over Christo Reyes. René Idems, another German through after beating Ricky Williams. And Roby John back in the winning groove at the expense of Michael van der Horst. 140. Dave Allen, our media manager, was pointing out also that uh, Remco is, as far as the day job goes, an online marketeer. 97. And do you require 87? Whatever 87. that is. Got a vague idea what it is. eBay? <laughs> Could be. Could be anything really. Or any bar bar in China? <laughs> 47. Well, we saw Van Eyden in Venray earlier this year. He beat Paul Milford to reach the second round, but then went down 6 1 to Adrian Lewis. Prior to this year, he hadn't played in the European Tour in the series current format. Uh, but he did reach the third round of the German Championship in November of 2008. That's a long time ago. Gilding causing the cameraman one or two problems by the fact he stands so far over on the left side of the hockey, but 35. unable to find a route to glory Andrew there. Well, that's where Gilding's been letting him down over the last 12 months. He's you know, scoring well, but not closing the game out, missing doubles as he has there. After three clear darts there, Rem Coat. Just don't miss the well, that's a perfect first dart. Can it be a perfect second dart? Well, that's not bad. A guy just tip the barrel and you're in. And that's exactly what he's done. Perfect guide. The first dart at double eight. And he nicks the first leg and against the throw. A good tidy 15 dart leg from Van Eyden. Second leg, Remco to throw first. Game on. Yeah, he's had a curious career as Remco and Van Eyden. I mentioned that performance in the German Championship in 2008. Not long after that, he Lost 3-2 to Tony Eccles in the last 64 of the PDC World Championship. Then he had a good 83. run at the European Championship, and then he returned to the BDO. So he's flip-flop between the two. Which they can do. Which they can do. I'm, 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 play darts wherever you feel comfortable, and you can earn a few quid. We don't mind. The only thing we ask for 
his ability. 16. And, and, you've got, you, and respect, I assume. Uh, as well. Yes, and respect. If not, we beat the respect, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> we have some big security blokes. Can't say as well, Gilding 59. did not hang around in qualifying. He had the advantage of only having to play two matches. He had a 6 0 win against Sam Head and a 6 2 defeat of Ronnie Baxter as well. So he only lost two legs in qualifying. 60. As I said, also we saw him in Munich, lost to James Richardson 6 1 in the first round there. Richardson had a great run at the German Masters at uh, the Easter weekend. He did, he played really well, didn't he? Yes. So we might excuse Gilding that particular performance. 39. And he, he Richardson's son's played extremely yeah, well. Yeah, Josh. Yeah, it's great to see the youngsters come through. I know they practice together a lot. 81. You mentioned Gilding over the last two years. It's over a year now since he got to the semis of the UK Open where, you know, he beat some really good players on the way. Class and Painter, Sulovic. Lost to MVG in the end, no disgrace, of but course. But he pushed him. But he pushed him all yeah, the way, yeah. he pushed him all the way. 80. Well, that's a sluggish start here from Gilding. He hasn't 100. really got going. 12 no, darts to get down to 200. we're waiting for the, the Gilding thumbs up for the maximum. Will we see it today? Remco's hoping we don't, but... Uh, and it is a really 56. funny throw that... that um, or stance, as you can see, he really goes over to the left-hand side of the hockey. And then twists his knee more than most people mm. or so in years to come, because he's a big fellow, would uh, have a bit of problem with that knee. 84. Okay, the sort of thing you could probably do with the dressing now before it, you know, before it gets too late or well, before the damage is done. Yeah, but it's, it's probably ingrained in his throw and in his mind, so you, know, you don't want to change anything. But has he ever tried just moving over another foot? You just don't know. You tweak, yeah. tweak things and um, may make you that 2 or 3% better. You just don't know. Well, he's uh, left himself an odd number here. 31 remaining. So that leaves double 12, so it's nicely set up. You have to check it there. Well, what way is Gilding going to go? The 20s, 420s for double 18, or 16 now for double top. Double top for Gilding to level it up. 76. Another double miss. So you require 24. Yeah, Ramco was staring at the floor there, just waiting for the the call, but it never came, and he's back in business here, you and he makes the most of it, and he extends his lead to 2-0. to throw first. Game on. But, uh, yeah, plenty of talking points from this afternoon's opening session. Great session for Germany. Max Hopp and René Items both winning. 83. More Germans in action tonight as well. Jihan Artuk, the German number two against Chris Doby. Now, Doby is a man worth watching out for tonight as well. He, he showed real is. promise, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we are guaranteed another German player to go through because Andre Velger will play Mike what Langendorf in the penultimate match of the nighttime session. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Doby again, a man who also really captured the imagination in uh, Munich with his run to the quarters. 31. Painter Gurney, one of the standout ties of the round tonight as well. John Henderson against Mark Webster. Josh Payne we've talked about at length today against Jamie Caven. And Joe Cullen's also had a great start to the year as well. He's in the first match of the night against Ron Moulinkamp. So yeah, he's playing really well at the moment, is Joe. And his sparring partner, Devon Peterson's up last. It's Johnny Clayton. Saving the walk on till the finale of the night. Give Devin his opportunity to shine and do what his a, moves on stage. He's a lovely, lovely lad. What a character. Yeah. Big fella. There's a big void actually when he doesn't qualify. He, uh, you know, you notice he's not there. But like in Gibraltar last weekend. Didn't make it to the to the rock. Gilding needs to find a treble, which he's done. 
thirty-four. Well, he's found two of them, so he's uh, given himself a chance, but well, I didn't. could put himself in a good position to go three 0 up here. Ninety-four. Well, good. He's got to look at the nineteens. He can't go for the twenty, so it's trouble nineteen or nineteen. Well, he wants the trouble twenty for double top. And he's missed that as well, so Van Eyden with a chance of a break hit. Okay, you require 110. Well, the first dart here, if it finds its way in, which it hasn't, it's some way below it as well. And he too is 58. not on and the finish you now. Require 20. Well, Gildin doesn't want to put this inside because then the old demons will come about missing. Needs to find the double ten, otherwise, wow, and that's a long way off. That's not the number, actually, hasn't it? Yes. Something must dislike that zero. Okay, you require it just 52. gets ingrained in your head that you can't hit a double, and, and instead of attacking it, you go, just please go in, please go in, and, and you know, the, the, it's totally the wrong attitude, and that's where Andrew is at the moment with the doubles, where Van Eyden, that's a perfect guide. Well, I'm, sorry, I'm very surprised he didn't follow that up. Yeah. So a let off for Gilding. Three more goes at double ten hit. To uh, hold his throat. That's awkward as well. That's covered a bit of the bed and that's just outside the wire and he's squeezed Game that one in. Charge in the third leg. The third time Gilding. of asking and he's off the mark. But he's still Game is a breakdown and trails by 2-1. So no white washes today in this afternoon session. 121. <laughs> 100. Not very clumpy shoes, Gilding, as well, hasn't he? Have you noticed? Well, he's a big fan. I think it's just the way he walks. <laughs> 60. Just gets on with his game, though. Never, ever have any trouble out of Andrew Gillian. Not that we have too much trouble with players. We have the odd little spat now and again, but... Uh... 60. As is the case in any sport. 90. Well, the first nine averages... Well, nothing to write home about. 96. As we've said, it's just about getting the job done in these first round matches and moving on. The winner of this, by the way, will have to improve. It's Van Gerwen <laughs> tomorrow in the in the last 32. So if, yes, you, if you've got a first nine average of 89 against Van Gerwen, you're not going to stand much of a chance. 140. No, but to be fair, as we've said so many times, these, these first round matches are so crucial, you know, to, to not only earn a bit of extra money, it's rankings and moving up the ladder so uh, you know 91. just because they, they they get over the line with a bad average it doesn't mean they're going to go into Van Gogh and hit that same average we mm. see it so often where they step up to the plate yeah and they're both you know class players have been around long enough to to have a good bit of experience 41 okay you're 133 and there have been times I mean recently Van Gogh has been winning matches with averages of 91 92 I mean, he's won matches with averages of 123.4 as well, but he has this 57. innate ability just to get the and job done, whatever, whatever he's throwing. But I recall in Munich, the semi-final with Joe Cullen, he won that with an average of 91. It wasn't spectacular, but it was enough, and it was a win for Van Gogh, and another win 16. for Van Gogh, and the roll of honour for 2016 Van just keeps on rewriting itself, keeps on adding to it. 76 for Van Eyden here. Double eight then for a 3 1 lead. That's nicely done. Well, I think he did that in the first leg, the 76, with the same sort of kill. He did, yeah. 76 check out in leg one and in leg four. Likes the double eight, a bit like Chizzy. Go, going back to Van Gogh, 51. I, I don't think it's, it's a fluke that. Van Gerwen plays every single tournament possible and he keeps his edge. Mm. And we know he's an exceptional talent. 
but by keeping that edge, he stays at the top of his 65. game. 65. Well, you get a lot of other players that are duck out of this, duck out of that, and you can see that their game, they haven't got that spark to it. And a lot of players, you talk to them and say, well, look, why don't you do this? No, they'd rather do exhibitions. Barneveld, you know, for one. 134. I do not understand. And we'll talk about it if I'm sitting here in another 20 years' time. We'll say, I'll <laughs> say exactly the same. But Michael is proof that he keeps his edge. He plays every single tournament. Yeah, very rarely has time off. Admittedly, he, uh, he's a young man, Rob, which does help. He's so. 26, isn't he? So, uh, oh, no, just, just a baby. 27, actually, now. Yeah. Celebrated his birthday in April. 62. Yeah, April 1989, the time when Michael Van Gerwen arrived on this planet. Well, that's what people, you know, when I say, you know, change little things here and there, don't be too drastic with your changes, because then it all sudden help. I mean, it weren't much more than five years ago where Van Gerwen couldn't win a game. Mm. I mean, he used to get upset because he couldn't 140. win. And then all of a sudden he started winning on the youth tour, and that helped him and gave him the confidence. And now look, mm. five, six years later, he's earning a million pound a year. Yeah. We talked last weekend in Gibraltar about the possibility of Van Gerwen winning all ten of these European okay, tour events, and that is, it's not beyond the realms. No. It's, a, it's a very distinct possibility, and that'll be quarter of a million pounds in prize money alone to swallow the Van Gerwen coffers. Twenty-five thousand more last night for 59. winning the Premier League and regular standings. It's bigger paychecks to come. You feel at the O2 Arena next week. Yes, and if he doesn't win it next week, then you kind of feel that top in the league is wasted. Yeah. I mean, he will be the favourite going in. But, um, he's got Aidy Lewis in that first okay, match, and Aidy is never a pushover. You never know what you're going to get with Lewis. You know, he could he could wear the treble out. But now, Van Aiden, 97. He took out the 76 nice and cleanly. Nicely done. A 97 checkout to go with the 76 checkouts in the first and fourth legs. He leads 4-1, and Andrew Gilding is on the Six verge of a, another first. early defeat here, another early Game exit on the European sort. What's interesting, he's had 276 and now a, a, a 97, and, and both of those kills, are, the double has been with the last dart, but the previous dart, 95. the double... Is put it in a perfect position to follow it up. Yeah. It hasn't split the number, so you've had to change and go chasing doubles around the board. It's been in the perfect position. It's got line and length, and just slides the dart, you know, beside it, as in the double eight, and just below it on the double. Sixty. Top. Yeah, he's looking very comfortable here. One more of those to fill it up. 140. 140 will do. Was that a snarl I see there? In the style of Kev Painter. No one snarls like Kev. He had a brilliant one last weekend in Gibraltar. Just almost pierced the screen. <laughs> Gilding, no, not done with just yet. We missed the thumb from Gilding. Did, we, did he do the thumb? The camera moved at the... Just the wrong moment. 85. I suspect he did. Maybe we'll see it again. There we see. Just look how far left over he is there. You see the right foot, the heel just touching the the hockey. 100. I did suggest once that that hockey should be extended a couple of foot each way, but be on the arc. So it doesn't matter where you stand, you are exactly the, the same, same distance. Have it like a semicircle, yeah. But I got laughed at. No, I, I, I would, I would have backed you up on that one. Have it the same distance, therefore have it in an arc. Forty. And you were born 161. Because people, you know, people like Andrew, he's so far to to the right that he is probably a little bit further away than what someone has. Forty-one. In the middle. I mean, it, it, it's probably okay, millimeters. You're born 141. But when you get people, you know, you, you get hidden dart, uh, closed darts that, that closing off trebles and they move into sliding the side of it then uh, 41 doesn't is matter where you are you'd be thrown from the same time I was going to say is, the, is there a rule about how far back you can stand as well oh. I mean, you can so you could stand in the crowd if you wanted to exactly 
Wouldn't advise it, obviously. No, I wouldn't want to be a caller or a chalker if you did. <laughs> <laughs> 60. Okay, you won 100. Russ well, Bray knows all about that. Didn't he break some or establish a world record of long distance throwing of darts? Oh, looking, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. And it was outside as well. Game shows and a sick overnight. Isn't bothered about breaking so world Andrew records here. He's just closing in on a first round Game win. On. Well, he's been clinical, hasn't he, on his checkouts. 276 is a 97, now the 100. You don't have to score quite as well when you've got that in your locker. And it's been a, a bit of solid performance up until now from Remco. And now he just needs to finish it off. And it's probably where Gildin is. He's not at the top of his game. He's not getting a lot of luck. He's having, you know, players against him taking out that sort of checkout. 99. Regular. And that's when you've got to have a strong mind. Yeah. Yeah, I can't be imagining that about Russ. I'm sure there was something where Russ threw a... He hit a bullseye from 10 feet away or something. Or maybe even further than that. 96. On a board outside. It was in Blackpool on the on the Golden Mile. I'm absolutely convinced it was him. Well, that's nothing. I, I hit a bullseye. I was in a helicopter and <laughs> chucked the dart out of the helicopter and hit the bullseye. Someone holding the dart on the tower. I mean, that's got to be the record, isn't it? And it's true. 50. They've got it on film. It's actually true. Chuck the dart out of the helicopter the promo for the world the match play for 2000 is there footage of this there is footage of it absolutely it's been played on sky many many times 140 was there editing involved in this not at all i was only a mile and a half away up 100 well andrew gilding is more than a mile away from remco van eyden here 5-1, he trails. Needs to pull something out of the bag here. Tries to give himself some encouragement. 97. Finds a treble with the third dart. And he's down to a finish first, albeit on his own throat. Some good pressure here, though, from Remco, maybe. Oh, this is very nice indeed. 123. About the last dart. 108. Well, no margin for error here from Gilding. Topsy wants them. Just is not at the races with the doubles, is he, Gilding? But really has let him down. I mean, it looks like he could... Well, he, he could come back to the board. But confidence-wise, is he confident to hit this double ten? It took him six starts in the previous leg that he won. Well, treble 17 would have left ball, but he's hit the two. 82. And you require 20. Gilding here has a chance to at least prolong the agony, maybe, or it could be the start of a terrific fight back. Double 10, he's had problems with this before today. And once again, he's wide of the mark. No score. On three the, thing occasions. Is, the thing is with a double 10 from where he stands, 39. he's having to twist his body even more to the right, which is awkward. It makes the stance awkward. Double 16, then two cracks at this for a 6-1 win for Remco van Eyden. 23. And Gilding gets another opportunity at double 10. Well, it took him six darts at double 10 to win his first leg. Doesn't want to split this now. Well, if you're going to miss, go outside. Ten. But don't miss twice. 21 darts for Gildin. 16. Now, torrid time on the doubles for Andrew Gildin. And he's gifted Remco van Eyden with three clay darts at double eight. Which he's taken out already today, including for those two 76 checkouts. And he takes it out again. And, the match and it wraps up Remco a fairly emphatic 6 1 win for Remco van Eyden. A man who, as we say, saw off some stiff competition in qualifying and he's seen off Andrew Gilding with some room to spare here. And the 38-year-old from, from Van Damme goes through to the last 32, where he will face his rather more illustrious fellow Dutchman, Michael Van Gerwen, in the second round tomorrow. Good performance from Van Eyden, disappointment from Gilding once again. Another early, early departure for him.
We'll see more so of Renko than Iden this weekend. That wraps Henry up the afternoon session. Fielding. Evening Board session from seven o'clock. First up, Joe Cullen against Aye. Ron Mullenkamp. Was it a surprise for you that you beat the number, I think, uh, 32 of the world? No. You prepared well? Sorry? You prepared well for that match, especially? Of course, I can beat anyone. Also, I can jeden schlagen, right? I did, but next, next opponent will be um, Michael van Gerwen. Who? Sehr selbstbewusst das Gadget. Also, ich denke mal, er kennt seinen Landsmann gut. Uh, how do you rate your chances in the next round? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, also. Sehr kurzes Gespräch. Bedanken uns aber trotzdem. Und sehen uns morgen. Beziehungsweise wir sehen uns natürlich heute Abend schon, wenn Sie im Besitz einer Ganztageskarte sind. Ich würde Sie jetzt bitten, über den Raucherausgang ähm, die Halle zu verlassen. Um 18 Uhr ist bereits wieder Einlass. Und auch heute Abend äh, werden wir drei deutsche Spieler erleben, unter anderem Gian Artut. Und es gibt ein echtes Nordderby, nämlich Andreas Welge aus Bremen gegen Mike Langendorf, ein gebürtiger Hamburger. Also freuen Sie sich drauf. Ciao.